Hannah and today I'm here doing my movie and television show wrap up for January 2018. I watched many things in January. I think I watched four TV shows and... I have 13 movies written down, but I'm pretty sure I watched more than that. I just kind of forgot to write them down and now I can't remember what I watched. So we're going to go with 13 movies and four TV shows. So as always, we're going to start off with the TV shows that I watched this month. And the first thing that I watched was Shadowhunters. I rewatched seasons one and two of Shadowhunters. It just kind of happened. My friend and I were like, yeah, why not? So I gave this one four out of five stars. And honestly, I have the same review I've always had. I still love it. Still think it's so campy, but I enjoy it so much. I'm still low-key in love with Sebastian. Like he, mm-hmm, yep. I don't know what it is, but something about him, I'm, I'm just, I'm still in love with him. And my friend is just like, Jenna, you can't be. He's a psychopath. I'm like, I know, but I do. So it says a lot about me, which is kind of worrying. And I'm definitely highly, highly, highly anticipating the third season. Like, I need the third season in my life right now. The second TV show that I watched this month was Gilmore Girls A Year in the Life, and I gave this one four out of five stars. Guys, I finally watched Gilmore Girls A Year in the Life. I mean, how long has it been? I Yeah, it's been too long. Should have watched it way before I did, but I finally have watched it now. And while it definitely took me a while to get into, like the first episode, I was just kind of like, what is this garbage? Like, why did they even bother? But then from the second episode onwards, I was kind of hooked. And by the third and fourth episode, I was like, oh my god, I need more. I didn't want it to end. I just ended up really enjoying it. I thought that it was the perfect love letter to the show. I love the characters. I still hate Rory in the revival, though. I think that she made some real stupid stupid ass decisions but she kind of came back and it just it was so beautiful and I cried so much and I can't believe it's now like officially over I'm officially done there's no more Gilmore Girls uh -huh. the third show that I watched this month was another rewatch and that was seasons one and two of The Fosters which I gave five out of five stars to so The Fosters is one of those shows that hardly anybody knows what it is but seriously y'all should watch it okay there is so much diversity so much representation so many important topics that people aren't talking about that are talked about on this show and every time I watch it, I'm blown away by the amount of effort they put in. Basically, The Fosters follows this couple and they are a an interracial lesbian couple who have one son from a previous marriage, two Latina twins that they adopted when they were, I think or something and then they are now fostering these two other kids who one's been in juvie and one is gay. That's pretty much all you need to know to be hooked on this show. There's so much representation going on. They go through all the different dramas. They go through family drama. They go through teenage drama. So pretty much anything you can think of. There's a lot of dealing with death. There's dealing with drugs and consequences and birth mothers and just everything about it makes me just so happy when I watch it because you really get involved in these characters and their lives and you just want the best for them but things just keep pushing them down but they keep getting right back up and I love them and I can't believe that show is ending which is one of the reasons why I was re-watching it. And the fourth TV show that I watched this month was Good Luck Charlie. I watched the final season which I gave four out of five stars to. Please don't judge me. Yes Good Luck Charlie is a Disney Channel show that finished years ago but I love it and I hadn't finished it and it was on Netflix so I finally decided to just binge watch the rest of the series and it was so good. Like it's just one of those fun little stories you can put on in the background you don't really have to think about. they you know really generic plots, very Disney, but it was something that I loved and I grew up watching Good Luck Charlie. So I'm not going to lie, I cried watching the finale because it's just one of those shows that you grow up with it and then it's not on anymore and you're like, okay, yeah. And then you realize that Disney's gone way downhill since those days. So that's also upsetting, but I really enjoyed Good Luck Charlie and I have to say, I'm really glad that I watched it. So like I said, uh, I watched 13 movies in January, although I don't remember a lot of them and a lot of them are rewatches that I watched when I was on the houseboat. Cause like I said, I went on a houseboat at the beginning of January. Actually, I don't think I said it in this video, but I've definitely said it before. I was on a houseboat at the beginning of January and all we really had time to do was swim in the river, watch movies, and read. So the first movie that I watched this month was Bad Neighbors 2 Sorority Rising which I gave 3 out of 5 stars to. So I found this movie to be funny in parts. It definitely wasn't as good as the first one and the only reason why I watched it was because Zac Efron and Chloe Grace Moretz were both going to be in it. I'm not like a huge fan of those sorts of movies so when I do watch one like it means that there's someone in it usually that I desperately want to watch. This time it was Zac and Chloe and while I thought that it was a good film and I did enjoy it I also thought that it wasn't necessary because the first 
film was like, this film wasn't anything amazing. Like I liked it, but I was like, okay. So this second one was like, it was again, it was like good and I liked it, but it was really lame in parts. So well, I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you're really looking for like a dumb, funny sort of film to put on in the background. My family and I then did a bit of a Harry Potter rewatch again. We watched movies one to six. I'm not going to say too much about them because it's Harry Potter and I love them and you all know that. So we watched Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which I gave five stars to. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which I gave four stars. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which also got four stars. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which got five stars. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, four stars. And Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, also four stars. And we didn't end up watching the Deathly Hallows because we didn't have part one. And by that point, we were all kind of over it. So that's all the Harry Potter that we watched. Like I said, not really gonna talk much about it because you've heard me talk about Harry Potter a million times on this channel. The next movie that I watched was Before I Fall, which I gave three out of five stars to. This movie I'd heard about, obviously, being a YA novel, I knew a lot about it and I had plans to go and see it in the cinema, but just kind of never got around to it. I guess the ending within like the first 10 minutes of the film, I was like, yeah, so this is how the movie's gonna end. And I hate when I can do that in movies because it means they're too predictable and it's just, ugh. I have to say though, I still did really enjoy the movie and it was actually really quite stressful in places. Like I knew what was gonna happen but it was still really stressful like I don't know it was just one of those weird things and I was surprisingly emotional when I was watching it too like it got me in certain places that I was like wow didn't expect that so that was fun so I'm glad that I finally got a chance to watch it but it's not one that I would like rave about I then rewatched Grown Ups which I gave four out of five stars to I have to say that Adam Sandler for me is only funny when he's with Drew Barrymore or in a group of people I don't really like any of the movies that he's done on his own but Grown Ups is one of those films that I love and I can watch it again and again again and again and still laugh at it. I love the family dynamic and the jokes in it are really great and considering how many characters they have in this film the majority of them have a lot of depth to them which I think is really interesting and something that you have to praise because in a movie with that many characters it's not often that you get depth in each and every one. I then rewatched The Greatest Showman <laughs> twice. I've seen it three times now and I've bought tickets to go see it a fourth time for the sing-along. Yep. So it still gets five out of five stars from me for all the same reasons that it did last month. Although, point that I have to make here, it's more emotional when you watch it the second time around. So like the first time around I like teared up in certain places, but the second time around I sobbed. I don't know why, just for some reason, yeah, the second time around is so much more upsetting. I don't, I don't know why, but it is, but it's still amazing. And if you all haven't seen it yet, what are you doing with your life? Go watch The Greatest Showman. Seriously, you won't be disappointed. Go watch it. Unless you hate musicals, then, then, then maybe don't worry about it. I then watched Paddington 2, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars to. This film gave me so many feels. Like, I was crying in the cinema. And, okay, let's let's paint a little picture for you guys. So it was school holidays, middle of the day. Cinema was packed full of kids and their grandparents. And then there was me sitting by myself. And I was crying. I was like, this is so emotional. People need to be more like this bear. Seriously, if the world, if everyone in the world was more like Paddington, the world would be a much better place. I've said that every time I talk about this movie. And I know I'm right. Literally all the times when he's just like Aunt Lucy says that when we are kind and polite the world will be right. I'm like yes Paddington! Mmm! That is so true! Why can't more people be like that? Considering this is a sequel to a movie that I didn't think we were ever going to get a sequel to I really thoroughly enjoyed it. The plot was so much fun. The characters are just I love the characters. Even characters like Judy who we really didn't get to see much in this film the times that we did get to see her was just oh it was so special and I love her. I loved all the new characters. I thought they were so funny and I loved the bear and I could go on talking about Paddington for ages but I won't because I want to get started on the next movie that I watched. So the next movie that I watched was Pitch Perfect 3 and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed this movie. Uh, something that I wasn't expecting to do. It, you know, sometimes with movies like this you think that it's probably gone on for a little too far and Pitch Perfect 3 is definitely one of those films that potentially they could have gone on too far but I was happy with it. Like I love the storyline that we got. It was typically in Pitch Perfect fashion so random in places but we learned a lot about the characters they all had some serious character growth and the movie wrapped up really nicely it's like really wrapped up the trilogy in a neat little bow and I loved it great ending to the franchise the music was great I don't really have a bad thing to say about it I really enjoyed this movie and then the last movie that I'm going to be talking to you about today but most likely not the last movie that I watched in January is Coco which I gave four out of five stars to Coco was really good like it was a Disney Pixar film and it's the first Pixar film to have like feature length songs and I think one of the things I loved the most about the film was how in-depth into Mexico Mexican culture it went. Like we were heavily in the Mexican culture. The characters spoke Spanish quite a bit, like full-on Spanish.
Spanish. Or just really simple words, like when they were saying they would always say like, hola, they wouldn't say hello, then it would always be gracias, not thank you. And it was just like little things like that. They just throw in these Spanish words every now and then that make sense. And it was a lot of fun. The film was very vibrant and colorful. And although I did guess the ending because it's a Pixar film and it's very easy to guess the ending, it didn't take away my enjoyment at all from the film. And I really, really love this one and think that everyone should go see it. So yeah, those are all of the TV shows and movies that I watched in the month of January. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you watched in January. I would absolutely love to know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Stay random. Bye.